Hi, I'm Ian New. I'm sure you're watching. My name is Pranav and in this series of Pseudoscience Police, I like to look at channels propelling pseudoscience and misinformation. You've been making questionable content all this while, but with this one, you've gone into that conspiracy theorist territory and all scientific temper has been thrown right out the window. So I'm gonna analyze every claim you make in this video and talk about what's wrong with the thought process behind each conclusion, because there's a lot wrong. Before we begin though, I just want to say that I respect you as content creators, your work ethic, your consistency, your understanding of what the audience wants is something every creator will wish they had. And I like some of your older content. Your channel used to be something I've watched regularly and so I get the general theme of your channel. You guys want to highlight the greatness of India. And I applaud that. That's a great thing to do. In fact, I try to do the same thing with my channel. The only difference is I don't sacrifice my reason and rationality in order to do that. And if there are people doing that, they need to be called out. Your intentions may be in the right place in making this video, but I think it does more harm than good. And I'm going to show you why by the end of this video. And I'm going to do this video without getting a copyright strike, so I'm not going to use any of your clips. I'm going to use a transcript of your exact words uh, in the video. So if if anyone feels I'm misrepresenting you or taking your words out of context, I'll leave a link to your video down below so people can go check it out and confirm for themselves. With that said, let's begin. Right at the start of the video, Abhi says this. A section of society will not like this video because it's about Indian history. My criticism of the video has nothing to do with the fact that it's about India and everything to do with the video being completely irrational. I like India just as much as you do, but I'm not blind enough to believe things that are devoid of any logic. I think they said this in the beginning of the video so that they can disregard anything anyone says against their video as being the opinion of an India hater. And that it has nothing to do with the fact that someone is trying to point out the irrationality. Okay, sure. Anticipatory bail check. And they said Indian history We'll talk about what's wrong with that as the video goes on. Next, Abhi and you introduce what the video is about, advanced ancient Indian technology. They ask us to share and subscribe. But I was surprised they didn't ask the viewers to watch till the end. I thought that was an important part of every Abhi and you video. I guess they're not looking for maximum watch time from their audience anymore. The video begins with this claim. Oppenheimer's quote on witnessing the blast of the atomic bomb has a connection with the Brahmastra uh, and other such destructive weapons. I've said this before, Oppenheimer was an admirer of Hindu scripture and his quote on witnessing the first testing of an atomic bomb um, was a quote from the Bhagavad Gita. I found two variations of this quote and in both he's merely comparing the awe he felt on watching the, the blast to Arjuna seeing the Vishwarupa of Lord Vishnu, which was like the brightness of a thousand suns cast upon the sky at once. These are lines from the Bhagavad Gita which is part of the Mahabharata. That is the only connection. Any other connection you draw is in your own head and not out there in reality. They also commit a logical fallacy of false equivalence here in comparing astras to nuclear weapons. They say only specific people can have access to these astras, just like only nine countries have access to nuclear weapons. And you need secret mantras to unlock these astras, just like you need secret codes to unlock these nuclear weapons. So what, astras must be the same as nuclear weapons? They haven't substantiated why, other than carefully phrasing their sentences so as to make them appear similar. From here on out, much of the basis for the claims in the video are from the History Channel documentary, Ancient Aliens, which has been widely regarded as the number one conspiracy theory show. The show has been criticized multiple times for going after sensational stories at the expense of factual reporting. And since they haven't done so, I'll provide exact links below to the History Channel videos. Uh, the the ancient aliens videos, the clips of which have been cut and used in their video by Abhinu to make their claims. You can go check this out or you can watch the entire episode for free on this 
uh, website you might need a vpn me i watched the entire episode and oh boy there are some <laughs> wild claims where did the ancestors receive this information aliens people from other planets just so I know why they're saying it, let's look at the actual evidence presented in the documentary based on which Abhi and you reach their conclusions. First, the Mohan Jadaro claim. They say that a stone found at the site uh, shows evidence of a nuclear blast. Let's see what the documentary says. On the site, they found vitrified and fused material uh, which they analyzed and found that it could only have formed in 4000-5000 degree heat which is not achievable by an ancient civilization normally. That is the evidence. They interpret from this evidence that this is the result of a nuclear blast. I mean, I agree that we don't know what is the cause of this heat, but isn't it jumping to conclusions to assume that it's because of a nuclear blast or something supernatural? We don't know exactly what happened. We are filling that gap in our knowledge with this, this assumption. Why not something else that produces extreme heat, like a meteor impact? After a brief introduction of the Pushpak Viman from Ramayana, they say how a scientist from California read the Ramayana, extracted these designs and uh, determined that the aircraft could fly. Now, I had access to the entire episode and I wanted to watch it and figure out exactly how these designs were extracted. And this is what I learned. One, they're not talking about the Pushpak Viman from Ramayana. They're talking about a Vimana from the Vaimanika Shastra, which is a book written in the 1900s claiming that its origins are from the Vedic period. Two, the scientists did not extract these designs himself. They were done by a lady named Kavya Vadadi and sent to him. That's what the documentary says. I want to learn exactly how these uh, designs were extracted by her. I found this video where she explains this in detail. Uh, unfortunately, it's in Telugu, so I got a, te a friend who speaks Telugu to translate it for me. Arjun Nidigallu has studied aeronautical engineering and has read the Vaimanika Shastra, and this is what he had to say. So there's no cause, they don't talk about any cause and effect, they just talk about effect, um, which, which I thought was more literary, it was more... Um, storytelling and fiction rather than technical so um yeah i think this particular video though what she's tried to do is try to align or, or fill the gaps so it's the fill the gaps that are in the vimana shastra with whatever she learned in engineering um which is problematic we discussed the video in detail and he told me how the designs are mostly her own creative interpretations and can't be fully credited as being from the text. I link that Telugu video down below. Anyone who understands Telugu can watch the video and confirm what I'm saying here. By the way, Arjun has his own channel here on YouTube. It's called Vulture Watch, uh, where he does topics combating pseudoscience and exposing scammers. It's really good. You guys should go check it out. I'll leave a link to it down below. I'd just like to add for anyone who still takes the Vaimanika Shastra seriously that its claims have been debunked way back in the 70s by this paper uh, by scientists at the IISC. Now this experiment by the California scientists where he found that the model uh, was capable of uh, generating lift means nothing after everything that I've just said. Next, the claim about Shivkar Talpade. He said to have flown an aircraft based on these designs eight years before the Wright brothers. But no source can confirm this actually happened. There are accounts of eyewitnesses but none have actually been confirmed. Also, it's unlikely if his designs were based on the Vimana but can you deny this actually happened? No, but do you want to believe this based on this possibility? I'll say this, believing something on the basis of possibility shows wishful thinking, a kind of desperation even to believe something even if it's unlikely. And to believe something on the basis of evidence shows a rational mind. So on what basis do you want to believe? 
At this point, I found myself asking the question, why did Abhi knew not mention their source? I mean, if they got their information from this documentary, why not say it? Why use vague words like a scientist from California? Uh, did this experiment. I mean, I declare all my sources uh, so that my audience can go check it out themselves um, and not take my word for it. So why would Abhi and you not do the same? Is it because ancient aliens has a terrible reputation because of the information it presents as facts without actually confirming it? And so using that as a source undermines every idea that they're presenting in this video? Is it because even if you haven't heard it before, the name Ancient Aliens itself has conspiracy theory written all over it that they'd rather not say uh, for fearing that they might not be taken seriously. This tells me that they are very aware that uh, the show makes widely rational claims um, that aren't backed up very well. So why don't they use that same logic and not make this video? There's a very simple rule that I always use. Uh, if I want to put forward an extraordinary claim, I want to make sure it stands on solid ground. I want to make sure that I can back it up with strong, robust evidence and not weak, flimsy evidence like they've done with this, with this ill-repeated documentary as a source. Uh, something that is known to exaggerate what it says. I hope they know that people will think twice before taking them seriously in the future. They've kind of ruined their credibility with this video. They talk about how there's a device, the artificial womb, which can grow a fetus outside a mother's womb. And uh, the, the first mention of this was in Mahabharata, where the Kauravas were born outside their mother's womb using this technique. This device is still in research. It's not in regular use everywhere. I feel like they're finding the slightest similarity and equating the two. What about the dissimilarities? What about the fact that in the story of the Mahabharata, it's a lump of flesh that gets cut into a hundred pieces and put in these pots and grow into a full human being? They also seem to have figured out how to divide like earthworms. What about the fact that these pieces were kept in pots of ghee and they somehow magically got all the oxygen and nourishment that they needed. It takes a lot of creative interpretation to think these mentions are anything other than fiction. There are a lot of people like Abhi and you that have seen seriously endorsing a claim that Ramayana and Mahabharata should be treated as history and not mythology. I've seen Jaggi say it, I've seen Shri Shri say it, so let's answer this question. Does the Ramayana and the Mahabharata have historical elements? Yes, of course. These characters in the stories were probably based on real people that actually existed. There are actual geographical locations uh, in the story. And are there mythological elements in the story? Yes, of course. A flying monkey that can carry a mountain, uh, gods incarnating in human form, stones that can float on water, giants, uh, parts of ghee that can grow human babies, you name it. So what do you call something that's a mix of history and mythology? A legend. The legend of Ram, the legend of Krishna, the legend of the Mahabharata. History has to be factual. These are all legends. Abhi and Neo are concerned with the image of India, right? Cool. Let's talk about it. There are people watching this video who completely trust Abhi and you. They're going to believe what is said here. They're going to think that they're hearing great things about India because that's what they're used to getting from Abhi and you. Well-researched stuff. They won't know how baseless this is. Let's say one of these people talks to someone outside India. They're going to proudly talk about how their ancestors had these advanced technologies, uh, citing things said in videos like these. When they're not able to back up any of what they've said, how ridiculous is that gonna make them look? Now imagine hundreds of thousands of people in the whole country doing this. How stupid is that gonna make India look? If we don't criticize this ourselves, who else will? Other countries are not gonna say anything. They don't wanna be outsiders. Uh, disrespecting our nation and culture. They're just gonna silently ignore us and not take us seriously from now on. Is that what you want? 
This country has a lot of science and math and astronomy that came from it. There are genuinely great people that hail from this nation who made incredible achievements in their fields. But those genuine accomplishments that have evidence backing them up uh, are gonna get mixed up with these uh, ridiculous claims and not get taken seriously. Is that what you want? This is just one scenario I've given about the image of India. You can think of a thousand other scenarios where misinformation is harmful. My previous video talks about how making people prone to pseudoscience like this video does is harmful. Article 51H of the Constitution says it's the duty of every citizen to develop a scientific temper and these videos do the opposite. I'm sure everyone knows someone who makes absurd claims about their ancestors like Abhi and you. Please share this video with them because they probably don't know why they should stop. They probably don't know that they're hurting India, not helping it. I think what India needs is more people that call out ridiculous stuff like this. People get away with saying stuff like this way too often uh, and they go unquestioned. I hope you understand the need for criticizing ideas like this and if people respond by saying hey isn't it possible that things could have happened this way just tell them believing something on the basis of possibility shows wishful thinking believing something on the basis of evidence shows a rational mind I hope you enjoyed watching I'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope